Hello, my friends. May God bless all of you. And may His Word, the Word of God, meet all of your needs today. And what is human beings' greatest need? Many will say, oh, it's money. And money. What can money do? Money can buy a house, a car. It buys clothing, items of clothing in general. Money can buy what the world offers. Money can buy anything that the world offers. However, the world has nothing valuable to offer to the soul. So, the human soul feels pain, feels a heaviness, a sadness, an emptiness. It feels joy. It feels pain. It groans. It feels the lack of peace. And all of these which the soul desires, everything that the soul desires is peace, it's calm, it's tranquility, isn't it? What does it mean or what's the point of having all the gold of the world and not being at peace with yourself and above all with God? Isn't it true? So. What is the greatest need that you have? Oh, I want to work. Work for what? To have money so I can buy things, so I can spend, isn't it? Oh, I want good health, Bishop. So you want a healthy body, muscled, right? Great. However, your body, your muscled body, will attract the eyes of people, lustful people, and the body will not rejoice as long as your soul is bankrupt, isn't it? Tell me the truth. So you have a muscled body, a very nice body, but your soul is tired, your soul is ill, your soul is oppressed. Your soul is empty. Your soul has insomnia, is anxious. Your soul lives in doubt. Your soul has no peace. It's restless. So, what's the point? of a person having a muscled body, having beauty, but the soul continues to be miserable and unhappy. Sometimes people say like this, I want to get married to be happy. It's the soul that wants to be happy. The soul, I want to be happy, I want to get married so I can be happy. However, if they want to marry to be happy, it's because we suppose that they are unhappy. And why are they unhappy? They are unhappy because their soul is groaning, is thirsty, is hungry. Isn't it? So they get married. They marry the first one they find. But the first one they find, or the second or third, are also looking for happiness. It's their soul that is unhappy. So you can imagine two unhappy souls joined together. It's a living hell. It's hell twice as much, isn't it? You just have to think, to reason a little bit. And that's why Jesus, knowing of the need of human beings, the human soul, he said like this, come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden, meaning those who are tired, it's the soul. Oppressed is the soul. Those who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
which means Jesus promises to bring relief the souls that are tired, that are overwhelmed, they've had enough. Perhaps you are that person who you lack almost everything. So you run after the things of this world to have something extra in your life, isn't it? But there are those who have already conquered everything and still they are empty. They are shallow. They are unhappy. They are bitter. They are unhappy. So how can this person be satisfied? This person that has everything that the flesh loves and enjoys, but they have a bankrupt soul that is in despair. What will the person do then? There's only one way, my dear friend. Each one has to use their own intelligence and wisdom, their reasoning, their spirit, so they can give a direction to their own heart, which is afflicted and hurt and tired, which is the soul. The heart is the soul. So, by placing this heart on the altar of God, it's He, my Lord. A heart that is wounded, bitter, that is sad, tired, full of doubts, anxieties, this heart of mine that I can't stand, my soul is unbearable. It makes me feel pain every day. Very well, my dear friend. Jesus said, come to me. Only he has what it takes to fix, to resolve this problem of yours. And when a person gives their soul, their heart to Jesus, then he gives them a new heart, a new soul. <laughs> Besides placing his spirit inside of that person. So God, my dear friend, is not a religion. Faith is not a religion. The word of God is not a religion. The word of God is God is speaking to those who are thirsty and hungry for righteousness. If you are one of these people, then he says, come to me and I will give you rest. And he says, take my yoke upon you. What is the yoke of Jesus? His yoke is that we obey the commandments that go against the world that go against people, that go against society. The yoke of Jesus is the truth. The truth. You take the truth with yourself, and this is it. You will already find straight away that your family members will think that you are going crazy, that you are a fanatic, that you are this, you are that, and so on. However, those who give their heart to Jesus receive from Him peace, a peace that cannot be expressed, a peace that is impossible to express. It's extraordinary. And so your peace finds rest. It becomes quiet. It becomes healthy. And then this will mirror on the outside, which is the body that will be healthy as well. So, for example, when the person says, I would like to have at least one minute of peace, I have no peace at all. That's what it is. It's your soul that is hurting. It's your soul that is saying, oh, I can't stand this anymore. And many even want to end their own life. Why? Because their soul is in a deplorable situation. So they want to end their life to try and resolve the problem. But it won't resolve the problem. Because if the soul suffers in this world, in this physical world, imagine how much more it will suffer in the spiritual world when the soul 
hasn't been given, the person hasn't surrendered themselves to Jesus. You can imagine. If in this world the person is groaning and screaming, their soul is screaming of pain, imagine in the world to come. Imagine in the world of darkness. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. When you place your yoke on the altar, then Jesus gives you his yoke and you go ahead. Of course, you are going to suffer the consequences because when the person carries the yoke of Jesus, it's the yoke of having a good character, of being honest, the yoke of truthfulness, of righteousness, being a fair person. You who watch me now when you are a judge, for example, you are a commissioner, you are a lawyer, you who work daily with justice, then, my friend, you can be sure that to him who much is given, much will be required as well. So, in order for you to have peace, you have to give your heart on the altar. I can even understand the struggle or the great hardship that a policeman, the people who work with justice, I can imagine how much they struggle in terms of persecution and tribulation or the pressure, the, the pressure that comes from their superior. I know that, I can understand it. But if you place your heart on the altar, the Lord Jesus will fix it all. Because once you are well within yourself, you are going to be very well with yourself on the outside as well. That's why he said, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. <laughs> Rest for your souls. I'd like to, to pass on to you what God has been giving me. I try. I try to give my best. But we, as human beings, made of clay, it's hard. But I'd like you to have the peace that the Lord Jesus has given me. I would like that. Because never again your life will be the same. But I can't. I cannot believe on your behalf. I can pray for you. I cannot act on your behalf. I can pray for you. So here we are teaching the Word of God. These words are not mine. These are words of the Holy Spirit. So when the person hears this word, drinks from this word, and places it into practice, then they will have the result or the benefits of this word. Jesus that said, and you will find rest for your souls. This is here, it's not after death, it's here on earth. Rest here on earth, right now, for the soul that is afflicted and hurt and tired and restless, empty. You who are watching me now, my dear friend, and you desire that, today still, in all the universal churches of the kingdom of God, we are going to have the night of the soul. Go to a universal church. Go. It doesn't matter if it's not the temple of Solomon, if it's not a beautiful church, a comfortable church. It can be a small church, simple. But if there is a man of God there, which I believe there will be one there waiting for you, you are going to find rest for your soul because that man of God will pass his spirit onto you. Okay? 
May God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I'll see you tomorrow. Amen.